Welcome back to a brand new video. Thanks for dropping by. Today's title is all about, well, it's that time of year, isn't it? You may be thinking about buying some golf clubs for a special someone. You may be thinking about asking for golf clubs for Christmas. But you have to avoid these fatal mistakes because you could end up buying something that you totally regret and, well, that's no good for anybody. Welcome to a brand new video. I'm Alex Elliott. This is a daily golf channel. So today we're gonna to talk about five pitfalls that you just simply have to avoid. And we're gonna start at the top end of the bag with driver. One of the most expensive clubs, so let's make sure you get this right. Now, you know on this channel, I'm all about you being the best golfer that you can be. And having your equipment set up the correct way is really, really valuable. So the first thing I would say is anytime that we're buying clubs in general, if we can, let's get a fitting. But if you can't, well, this is the first thing that you should avoid. I want you to have a golf club that you're going to be able to hit on your bad day. If you think about it logically, there's no point on this earth of getting either fitted for a driver or buying a driver that you only hit well when you're swinging at your Sunday best. So if you're going for a fitting, let's make sure you're putting a nice smooth swing on it, not trying to swing out your boots, trying to show off to the pro that's giving you your fitting, but also if you're buying one off the shelf, let's not go extra stiff and nine and a half degrees. Let's make sure it's a club that you feel comfortable swinging away even when you're not swinging your best because that is more valuable. Being able to hit the fairway with a golf club as opposed to trying to swing a bloody poker. Right, next on my list and point number two is all about not buying some clubs that are above our station. It might be really nice to game some blades. This is probably some advice that I should take and pass to myself 100%. But we've got to buy some golf clubs, again, that are forgiving, that are something that we can use consistently out on the golf course, because again, it's no good sacrificing consistency. Now, one thing that I'd recommend in this case, if you're a higher handicapper, I would definitely recommend some game improvement clubs or, you know what, if you're brand new to this game, definitely go down that route of some game improvement clubs. If you're a mid handicap golfer wanting to go down that route of something a little bit more player looking is what I would say, or even if you're a single figure handicapper, a great way to sort of avoid this gap of game improvement to sort of some irons that look a little bit more like a player's iron is doing a combo set. So this is something that I've done in the past. I've had sort of bladed or thinner looking irons up to seven iron, then six iron all the way through to three iron or four iron a little bit chunkier, then three iron a little bit chunkier again. So you can see I've had a combo set and as that club gets longer, as it gets harder to hit, I've gone with something that's a little bit more forgiving. Not what I've done in my set right now. So point number two, if you're looking at buying irons this winter, you've got to make sure you're buying something that is fit for your station. It's something that's gonna be forgiving enough in the top end of the bag. So like I said, combo set for your lower handicappers is a great route in there. But if you're new to this game or a higher handicapper, let's just go game improvement. It's more important that we shoot lower scores, right? There are some great looking game improvement irons on the market right now. It's just something that we've got to use to get us into the game. That is point number two. So the next one on our list is lie angle. Length and lie to be exact. And this is something that's done if you do get a fitting for a set of irons. Now, if you're serious about your game or you're buying a present for someone who is serious about their game, this is something that's so important. And I'm gonna tell you why right now. Let's do it. 
let's start with a length. So if we're grabbing, let's say a seven iron, probably one of our most favored clubs in our golf bag. This is probably something that if you were to go for a fitting, you would get fitted with a seven iron. Now, when we're talking about length and lie, it is vitally important that we fit length first because length affects the lie of the golf club. So looking at it this way, I want to make sure that you've got a golf club the correct length that you can swing and find that center of the club face as often as possible. Because we all know this is the most efficient area. So reason why we have to fit length before lie because length affects lie. You think your driver is in a lot flatter angle because it's longer than say your putter, okay? Or pitching wedge or sand wedge, whatever that might be. So when you go for a fitting, and I'm gonna put this out of the screen here, you'll start off by hitting some with some face tape on. And this is just to make sure you've got the right length of club based upon you being able to hit the center of the club consistently. And this comes from your wrist to floor measurement as a guide. But the most important thing is that dynamic factor of when you're hitting the golf ball, is it striking it out the middle? Okay, now this is the vital part of this fitting. Get in the correct lie angle because if you don't have the correct lie angle honestly it can be seriously affecting your game and we know right golf is hard enough as it is so if we can control it with better equipment or some not the word I shouldn't use is better equipment equipment that is more suited to you because that is better equipment is lie angle so for example if you had a golf club which was far too upright as you're coming into the golf ball or at a dress as well, your golf ball tends to go a little bit off to the left, okay? This is something called face plane tilt. If your golf ball club is too flat angle, so your heel of the club would be off the ground at impact, your ball would tend to go off to the right. Now, the important thing here is we're looking at the dynamic lie angle. So that is when we would place some tape, which I put on the side of the screen here, along the bottom of this golf club, and we would strike it off that minging board. We're not looking to strike it too far to the heel, that would suggest the club's too upright. We're not looking to strike it too much towards the toe, that would suggest that our lie angle is too flat. We want that to mark that board consistently out the middle. So again, just reminding you of this, if our club at impact is far too much toe up into the air, our ball is gonna launch left. The opposite to that, far too much heel up into the air, it's gonna launch a little bit right. Now the important factor with all of this is to remember that ball flight is the master. So if we're striking it a little bit hit or miss, but consistently on the bottom of the club, but our ball flight is going straight towards our intended target, then well, that set of clubs is right. But you can see here, following that process, whew, that shook nice. It's vitally important to having a set of golf clubs set up correctly. Length before lie, make sure they're both matched up. We should definitely make sure if you're having a fitting, this is something your fitter is doing. Don't let them not do this. Ask them about length and lie. That's point number three. So hopefully you're enjoying this video so far. And if you are enjoying it, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a bit of a like. And on that point, have you ever had a bit of a howler yourself? Have you bought some golf clubs on a whim that weren't actually good for you? Let's own up, let's get in those comments down below. Two more points, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you these right now. So you can see so far, we've avoided some massive, massive pitfalls and errors here that will seriously cost you money. And well, equally as important, it's gonna cost you shots out on the golf course. Now, I don't want any of those to happen for you. That's why we've got golf instruction on this channel, we've got tips like this about your equipment as well. Let's look at the next part. So as you can see, we're going through the bag. We've started with driver, we've done irons, and we're now looking at wedges. Now this is vitally important. I think any time that we've got wedges in our bag, it's very important that we have consistent gapping. So how I would go about this, 
Go on the internet, search your clubs, find out what loft your pitching wedge is. Once you've found the loft of your pitching wedge, I tend to want to work towards four degrees of increments between. So for example, I have a 58, I have a 54, I have a 50, and then I've got my pitching wedge, which is around a 46, 47 okay degrees of loft so i've got consistently sort of four degrees of gapping between every single one of my wedges that is something that i think is vitally important if you're going to have good pitching good chipping and good variation around the greens the final piece to this puzzle putting the elusive short stick how many times do we buy one of these out on a whim? It looks good in the shop. We think, oh, that looks awesome. I'm gonna be the best putter. I'm never gonna miss with that thing. We go and purchase it. Well, sometimes you might be right. Sometimes that may work. But I want you to sort of follow these rules. Very often in a shop, you can give these a go. Even in your local PGA professional shop, you may even be able to take these out onto the putting green, actually onto the greens. Now that is way more valuable. So having a good surface to put on and try it is rule number one. The second thing, do you like how it looks behind the ball? So take this, I like my Cobra putter here and this is a supernova because it's really easy to snow where the center of the face is and it's really easy with these back two lines to line everything up towards target. Also, come with a bit of a bigger putter, just simply because the weights are further back, higher MOI, essentially just that little bit more forgiving. So the rules that I want you to stick to is number one, making sure you can give it a try. Number two, like it down behind the ball. And number three, go for something that's relatively forgiving, so even when you're not putting your best, you've got a good chance of rolling this up. So forgiving, I like the look of it because it's good to aim, it's easy to aim, and therefore you have more chance of holding those putts. That's today's video. There are the five points and the five pitfalls to avoid. Look forward to joining you tomorrow for some more where we're back out on the course.